Hello, so, how do we put our mouth on this thing? <laughs> well, uh, most of us, when we, uh, when we first get a harmonica, we blow into it and, and we're like, ooh, that sounds good, you know? And then we, we huff and puff on it in our various uh, rhythms, you know? Like, uh, well, the first time I played the harmonica and had it, uh, I would often play this. Well, it probably didn't even sound that, like, <laughs> that sophisticated. So, if you go on various YouTube videos and you're looking for harmonica embouchures or mouth positions, uh, most of the teachers uh, on this uh, program, uh, they, uh, they'll show you uh, the pucker position or the deep mouth pucker, uh, where you, you put your, deep in your bottom lip, and you, you kind of pucker until you find it, you know? And that's kind of how it works when I do it. I don't use that. I don't use that. Uh, most people use it, and they're amazing. Then you got these guys that are uh, uh, more from the blues camp, and they do something called the uh, uh, tongue blocking, where they play out of the corner of their mouth, and they cover the rest of the holes with uh, their tongue. So, like, like that, I guess. Uh -huh. I'm not really good at that either. I mean, those are the two main ways of doing it. Now, uh, Winslow Yerksa, the master of masters and teacher of teachers, uh, the author of Harmonica for Dummies, uh, he told me uh, that what I do is called the partial U-block, and I call it the tongue pucker. Now, if you uh, open up your uh, harmonica instruction manual, Sometimes you'll see uh, an option that to where you make a U with your tongue and you block uh, a hole here and a hole to the side in order to isolate a single hole. Now, that doesn't really make sense to me because the tongue is kind of shaped like a taco. Or at least my tongue is shaped like a taco. So... Uh, whenever I put it in a U shape. So it's kind of like has this ramp thing to where I just can't get it to fit like that. I don't know. So what I do is I flatten my tongue, right? And I slowly uh, curve it, right? Or I kind of form a bowl with my tongue, right? Right? But then it's not that extreme. I put my tongue here. Uh huh. Like that. I bring it up. To get those uh, clear notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, had, I just had my coffee. But I brushed my teeth first before I played the harp. As any good harmonica player should, or a responsible harmonica player should. So, this is what my embouchure looks like without the harmonica. See that? The bottom of the tongue, or the tip of the tongue, cradles the bottom of the harmonica. The, this lip barely touches it. It probably doesn't even touch it at all. And then the upper lip goes over the top. So it's just this. And I'll show you what it looks like from the bottom, if I can. Okay. So, uh, because of this, it has a 
uh, this kind of embouchure has a very narrow tone, uh, a very kind of squeaky tone almost, especially if you're playing in the higher. Eh. But, uh, but anyway, notice I don't move my hands. My jaw moves while I maintain the embouchure. And sometimes I like to put my tooth right there it's kind of an anchor, just a corner of my tooth. And my jaw moves. And since my bottom jaw and my tongue are basically really connected, when my jaw moves, my tongue goes along with it. And so I can go from one note to another note to another note. And because of that, if I blow in and out real fast and back and forth real fast. So while I'm blowing in and out and I'm doing this at the same time, I get a quadruplet. And a quadruplet is basically four uh, notes per beat. Okay. Uh, and we'll talk about, you know, quadruplets and fast uh, speed and, and everything another time. This is mainly about the embouchure itself. So, and if I widen that, make my tongue a little bit flatter, or put it deeper into, uh, into the mouth, onto the tongue, not on the tip, but on past the tip. Tighten it. Now, I would say the biggest drawback to this embouchure, the uh, partial U block or tongue pucker, is maybe it's the reason I can't bend very well. Because in uh, other instructional videos, uh, people who pucker and they keep their tongue off the harp, well, they say that when they're playing, so say the hand is the tongue, they arch the tongue back or coil the tongue back in order to change the air passages, uh, in order to kind of bend the air, and that causes the bend of the reed. So... Here's a here's with a pucker. I can't I can't do that. Uh, so here's with the tongue pucker, and here's my attempt at bending. So. doesn't quite work. It doesn't sound good to me. And so um, I, uh, I've kind of resigned myself to becoming just first position, straight shooter, straight, straight harp. So that's just, that's just what I do. Uh, anyway, so that's how uh, my embouchure works, the partial U-block, aka tongue pucker. Um, it's, it allows me to do, to play clear notes, it allows me to have a little bit of fluidity, a little bit of speed. The tongue is always lubricated, almost always more so than the bottom lip. And so I'm able to go back and forth. So And, uh, yeah, that's just my method, my mode. Um, oh, as a bonus, there is also the um, octave, octave split, where 
you take the tongue, the tip of the tongue, and you blow, uh, sorry, you block out two of these, uh, two, uh, uh, two holes, and you play on the side. So, So maybe if I learn to do more than just two, I can finally figure out the uh, tongue blocking method. Okay, so what I did was, so it's on the side of my tongue as well as the front. So, and I just use that rarely, but I can do it. So anyway, uh, the, uh, the partial U-block, it also allows uh, better channeling of the air, at least for me. So yeah, I hope uh, you're able to adapt this and use this and find it helpful, or at least uh, find it a passing curiosity. So take care. That's one of my secrets.